All right, hey you guys, welcome to this internet video. Uh, I want to put a little bumper on the video because I think, uh, I just want you guys to, you know, it's a long video and I want you to be able to get through it and understand what I'm going to get to. Uh, so I'm specifically going to be really talking about this guy, uh, the Magic Leap. Uh, so the Magic Leap is something that I'm actively developing on. I uh, am trying to create the world's uh, first augmented reality classroom uh, experience. I'm going to be calling it, I think, Slipverse or something like that. I don't know yet. Uh, but I, I got a chance to um, go and lecture at Santa Monica College to a bunch of game design and design students about the uh, about narrative games. And I really just turned it into like a Magic Leap type thing where I just want to tell them, hey, narrative's kind of gone, we're going to throw it away. But so I go over my history and I go over why this is amazing. And, you know, for you guys that are watching this video on, on, on the fence about getting the Magic Leap or don't know what the Magic Leap is, um, you know, it's the first spatial computer. It's the start of something you know, totally new. I, I think I'm calling it the, uh, the reality reset. Uh, it's a chance for us to redesign everything uh, and do it really coolly. Um, so what, I mean, but that sounds really abstract and a lot of people in the, in the keynote were, 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 were saying really abstract things. And I think a lot of people get frustrated by that. And there's a lot of people that, that are, are bashing the Magic Leap, like no killer app and shit. Screw you guys. <laughs> you guys don't really understand that when the computer was invented, was there a killer app for it? No, the computer was the killer app and it's up to us, up to, us to invent for it. So, uh, you know, and, and, and here's the moment that I really want you guys to be present on is all the information that was, you know, that, that when we were in that moment of the internet before, uh, there was stuff on the internet. People were like, oh shit, we've got to put stuff on the internet. That's the moment we're in again. So enjoy the video, enjoy the lecture. So, hi everyone. Um, oh, I remember you. Hi, how's it going? I remember the game that we played together. Uh, so first off, uh, I just want to thank Julia for having me here. Um, but, you know, we just kind of randomly met. We kind of had some connection. It seems like she thinks deeply about games and honestly, tell you just seeing what she had on the board there I'm like oh good she's a good teacher because I've met so many shitty teachers you know <laughs> it's true I've met so many shitty game teachers people that are like oh I've worked in film animation and I've been hired to teach a game class and it's just a horrible mix so uh, I'm really happy to be here my wife went to Santa Monica College I've never attended here but I know it I like it I used to live a couple blocks away so I don't have anything prepared. You guys don't have a slideshow, so let me try to preface what I'm going to talk about. Uh, I will address, so Julie asked me to talk about narrative, narrative and video games. And by the end of this talk, I guess I'm going to get to the, throw away everything you know about narrative in games because it's about to change. Like throw away everything. Like just take everything that you fundamentally know about narrative and just throw it to the side. You'll pick bits and pieces of it up again, um, but in, for the next 10, 20 years, it's gonna fundamentally change. And I'm gonna tell you why. So, but first, before I tell you why, I, I think I always listen to people better, and this was always a technique when I taught class, is I would really be very open about myself. To, I wanna make sure my fly's down. Okay, <laughs> okay, that would be really embarrassing if, 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 if my fly's down. Okay, but uh, see, that's one of the things I like to do. I like to be uh, open and insecure and, and be very um, uh, real with, with, with how I am as a person. Um, so I, f I feel if I'm that way, people listen to me more, uh, opposite than what my, most people think. So I think I'm gonna tell you about my history, uh, that how I got started, because you guys are at this real precipice right now. Most of you guys are 20-somethings, and, and if I'm like, I wanna see a show of hands on who really wants to make video games for a living in here. Holy crap, I'm in the wrong classroom. I got one, two, three. What are you, like, there's three people in here and there's like 20 no hands. What do you got, what do you want to do with your life? Well, I don't want to make video games, I want to work on video games. That's the same thing, dude. <laughs> God bless you. So, you just want to, so working in that, who wants to, okay, who wants to work in the video game industry? 
Okay, we got more hands up here. What do you want to do here? I'm, I'm just one. You're still figuring out. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll stop, I'll stop pinpointing you. We have a lot of interaction design students in this class. Please. Interaction yeah. designs. Perfect. Guess what? This talk is really, really relevant to you guys. Uh, pay attention. So uh, anyway, um, I'm going to go over my history and lead you up until this moment, and then take you to the moment after this moment in class and what's going to happen. So my history is I was uh, an artist from the time I was a kid. Uh, I um, was, I don't want to use the prodig uh, word prodigy, but I was drawing photo reel at like 10 years old. You know, I was, I was drawing photo reel. So, and by like 12 or 13 years old, I was drawing or painting on giant canvases with oils and displaying my work in galleries and selling my work. And, you know, I was a very precocious kid. I just knew I wanted to be an artist, and I was going uh, right through it. As I was painting and, 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 and being an artist, um, uh, well, so my father was a writer, and he, he wasn't a technology guy, but he was a wordsmith. He just loved to write. He wrote all day. He wrote for, for TVs and movies in the 60s. Um, unfortunately, he became an alcoholic, so that kind of got in the way of that, which I'm sure some of you guys have some hard childhoods. I did as well. Um, one of the things we didn't see eye to eye on was video games. Uh, he wouldn't let me get a, a Nintendo. He wouldn't let me have a Nintendo, and I was like, fuck you, Dad. Um, but there was an arcade, Aladdin's Castle. Some of you guys probably watching this video, the old timers will remember Aladdin's Castle. Aladdin's Castle was about a mile away from my house, and I would walk there every day with no money uh, and watch people play video games. That's what I did. It's just what I did. I was so fascinated by video games. I, I, I now know what I was fascinated by. I was fascinated by them as an art form, because I was expressing myself with paintings, and there was just these digital live creations. Uh, there was an old game that you guys don't know, but it was called iRobot, where you'd go in the arcade, and if you put a quarter and you'd play the game, but then there was this alternate mode where you could paint in 3D on it. For a quarter, I was like, oh my god, this is the coolest thing. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I lived in this arcade, and um, I, 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 so, so I would live in this arcade. I got a little older, and I stopped doing paintings uh, because, for one, I was a mess. Uh, horrible home life, uh, a, so much of a mess that we didn't have any money, so any paints that I had, any uh, uh, you know brushes that I had, I wouldn't clean them, they dry out, and I'm like, fuck, I can't paint anymore. Uh, but then, luckily enough, my art teacher uh, uh, said to me one day, he's like, hey, Nick, well, well I was in all the advanced art classes in, in my high school. I went to Redlands High School, one of the largest high schools in California. And he's like, hey, why don't you not come to class? And why don't you go to the computer lab and go uh, sit in front of this new thing called Photoshop. And I'm like, Photoshop? Okay. So I got really blazed out of my mind, just letting you know. I was a pretty fun high schooler. Uh, I really didn't do too much. I got blazed out of my mind, which was a mistake. And they sat me down in front of uh, this computer. And I had never touched a computer in my life. And they're like, use this. And I was really stoned. <laughs> I was really stoned. And uh, they didn't realize that I came from a zero technology family and I had no idea how to, how to even open anything. Like how to even open it. But they just took it for granted I did. So I sat in that room with this, you know, for literally six months with this cryptic device in front of me. I know I love video games and I can kind of play them, but file structures and opening folders and how to navigate an operating system was beyond me. But I did end up getting Photoshop, scanning in one of my works and doing a paintbrush. So I had an airbrush paint structure on it, and I was like, holy shit, I, didn't, I don't have to clean this brush. <laughs> like, I have infinite paints for a poor kid. I had infinite paints, I had infinite, you know, brushes that I didn't have to clean. It was like, I'm hooked. This is what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. So, um, what happened then? Uh, so what happened then, uh, I got through high school, met my wife uh, in high school, uh, knew that this is what I wanted to do, but it was a mess. I was a mess. Some of you guys are still messes. And uh, they shipped me back to where I was born, by the way. I was born in Louisiana, lived with my grandparents. Uh, and, I got, I, and, and they sent me at 18 to the University of New Orleans. I went to the University of New Orleans. And, was, uh, and because of my art background, I basically had like just this giant pool of college credits. So when I went to college, first day, they're like, hey, you don't belong in Art 101. You're going to go sit with the people that are getting their master's degrees in art. I'm like, oh, cool. That's great. I got in the room, and I, 
I guess the best thing, I was youthful and arrogant, and I was like, these people are all douchebags. They're really like looking at cubes in the wall and going, wow, don't you see the meaning? And I'm like, no, it's just a fucking cube on the wall. Uh, and it was just too artsy for me. Uh, so I get, I was like, why are, when, when do we, when do you teach me Photoshop? Like, when do you teach me photo? I want to learn Photoshop. And they're like, what's that? And, you know, Louisiana, just getting you know, was the, the, it's the last state in the United States for education. And so I was like, but I want to learn computer graphics. Like, we don't teach computer. What I wanted to know hadn't really been being taught yet in the world. Like, Photoshop had just been invented. No one was teaching it. Like, you guys are in a world where it's all taught. So I was like, um, luckily, I went to my grandparents, and I was like, hey, I want to drop out of school and teach myself um, uh, how to use Photoshop. And they were like, you don't have a computer, and we're not going to buy you one. <laughs> My mom, um, who I, my, my mom and dad got divorced, reconnect with, you know, uh, I was like, mom, I really want a computer. She's like, okay, I'll buy you one. Bought me a computer. Uh, I went to my aunt, my aunt Marilyn, uh, who's really rich. And I'm like, hey, Marilyn, you know, you, you know, I need Photoshop. It's $900. This was before wares and pirating and any of that stuff. So you actually had to buy it, you know. There, you know, there's been a time where you didn't have to buy it or you had to buy it. You didn't have to buy it. But now you're kind of having to buy it again with the Creative Cloud. Anyway, um, I had to get $900. So she said yes to me, luckily. And I got it. And I sat in a room, like, I sit in the upstairs of my grandparents' attic. And uh, I started teaching myself Photoshop for reals now. And in two weeks, I had a job at the largest uh, advertising agency in all of New Orleans. Uh, so I went from really not having anything to going to work at the largest advertising agency because I just new Photoshop. It was so brand new that they're like, you know fucking Photoshop? Come on in. <laughs> and I've had that moment a few times in my life. Come on in. See? <laughs> Look at that segue there. Come on in. Um, so I went to work with them and got a chance to kind of understand graphic design a bit because I was more fine artist. Um, I got a chance to understand um, you know, messaging and branding and slogans and how to deal with clients and all that stuff. All the while, my itch scratching me going, you're meant to make video games, Nick. You're meant to make video games. You're meant to make video games. And uh, I remember it was a weird moment in my life where I actually verbalized. I said, man, I wish somebody would pay me to just sit in a room and learn how to make video games. Two weeks later, I remember saying that. It's a weird thing. I vocalized. You know, I'm, I don't believe in God or anything like that. But you know, it was it was this weird thing that I vocalized my need, and two weeks later, it, it, it was like a miracle happened. I walked out, which I never do. I'll tell you. I mean, I never do. Uh, I walked out to get my grandparents the morning Sunday paper, and I go get this paper. I've never done it in my life. I pick it up. I open it up for whatever reason. On the front page, it says, "Video game company just opened in Louisiana. The first video game company ever to be open in Louisiana has just opened." And I'm like, "Oh shit." I made it my mission to go work with these people. I called them up, left the message, called them up, left the message. They said, come on over. And you know how you guys need portfolios and everything? You know, you need a portfolio. I, I, had, I had all my work from high school, which was literally like this much of like stacks of pages. I brought all that in with me. And I'm like, here. Because I've been noodling video, I've been drawing video games forever. I didn't know how to program them, but I was drawing what they would be. Um, for the, for, I mean, I was, I mean, I spent all my high school working on a, a, a medieval fantasy game. And nothing programmed, but just thinking about it and just drawing it. So I brought all this, like, here, we could do this game, this game, this game. And they're like, you are perfect, kid. I was 19. You're going to be our art director. Wow. You know, that shows you how little these people fucking knew. You know, <laughs> you don't get hired just to be an art director. I mean, it doesn't happen. Uh, and, and God bless their, uh, their naivete and the situation we're in, because, uh, you know, they'll probably see this video. I mean, I'm still good friends with, with the guy um, uh, that hired me, and, uh, and, and, you know, they shouldn't have hired me. And, and so I knew Photoshop, and they're like, we're going to make a 3D game. I'm like, I don't know 3D. He's like, you'll learn it. I'm like, yes, I will. And so they gave me all the Coke I wanted. They, like, we just had endless supply of Coke, endless supply of pizza. That's how I got, I got this. I used to be skinny, but I got this there. And, um, and, 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 and I got my wish. 
I got my wish. My wish was granted. The universe granted my wish and said, you can sit with these these group great guys and just hang out for three years and make a video game um, and learn how to make video games. And so I, they gave me 3D Studio Max. It was a pirated copy of it at the time. Uh, who uses 3D Studio Max in here? Anybody? Oh, wow. Who uses Maya? Okay, we got one. Who uses Blender? Oh, okay. We got a couple people. Okay, a couple of people in here. 3D Studio Max was one of the first 3D programs that was really invented. Um, very professional, usable. And, but there was, it was a wares copy, there was no manual, so I literally spent a year clicking buttons going, how the fuck does this thing work? And then like magically someday, because there, there was no internet, there was no tutorials, like they were just coming out with books and Barnes and Nobles like about 3D Studio Max, but even that was a year into me learning it. So I just clicked there and if a sphere, a, a, like a cube popped up on the screen, I'm like, holy fuck, it did something, how did I do that, you know? And I, I, there was no manual on how to use it, there was no help documents, there was no wiki, there was nothing like that. So I sat there and, um, I want to say we worked really hard in the video game, but we were all kids and all we did was play Quake uh, and Duke Nukem. Uh, that's all we did. So we played Duke Nukem at first, which was really a great multiplayer game where you could do a land networking game where you could run up and like shoot somebody and it was, they were really there, like the games you guys play. Uh, so we were playing that, but right, you know, only a couple months in, Quake came out. And Quake was the first uh, multiplayer game you could play on the internet. And it was like, holy fuck, it just blew our minds. And so we literally played Quake 10 hours a day <laughs> for about two years. Uh, and, 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 but fine, we got a publisher for the game. Uh, we were working on the game, by the way, is called Dead Reckoning uh, that I worked on, which if you ever see the box cover, it's actually my face on the box. I, it's heavily Photoshopped and I'm all sci-fi, but it was based on photo from my face. Anyway, um, about two years, three years in, my, my memory's kind of foggy from all the drugs. Um, <laughs> it was something in there uh, that um, the publishers were like, you got to get a fucking game done. And so we're like, okay, we're going to get the game done. And so we buckled in, we got the game done. Uh, it was really stressful. We got it done. We released it. It was kind of, you know, it wasn't well received in America that well, but it did well. You know, it sold copies all over the world. We were in Best Buys. We were in Compu City. I don't know if, uh, Comp USA. Sorry, Comp USA. You guys don't know about that, but it was like a Best Buy. Uh, we're all over the world. Um, it was one of the first games that took a, 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 um, that used hardware acceleration. You guys know you have an NVIDIA card and, and that? This, it, like the, those things were just invented and we used the 3DFX card. And so we could have like transparencies and glows and it was all good. The game was crap, by the way. Just letting you know it's not a good game. Um, we didn't know what we were doing, you know. Nobody knew what you were doing. There was no blueprint for how to do anything. Like you guys are coming to world with blueprints and educational pathways on how to how to do stuff, but there was nothing like that. Anyway, um, I would say we, that company, were all wildly incompetent. Uh, wildly incompetent. Um, uh, it, it's true. Um, uh, I was the people there, and we couldn't figure out how to work as a team. We broke up as as we, we left this the, the guy that started it, which I still regret, you know, uh, doing that. But and I started. We tried to form our own company, and we, we were so chauvinist or not chauvinist. It's the wrong word. It's, it's so arrogant, so arrogant. We went and went went met with the company, and they're like, "We want to buy your engine," and they're like, "We'll give you five hundred thousand dollars," and we're like, "Fuck you, we want more." <laughs> And then, you know, they're like, no. And then two weeks later, we're like, we don't have any money. Um, let's, let's break up. <laughs> it was that insane. It was insane back then. You know, uh, we didn't know what we were doing. Anyway, um, let's talk about the next segment of my life. So I'm making video games. And now my grandparents are getting sick. And so I'm working. I'm still, you know, 21, something like that. And I'm living with my grandparents. I got to take care of them. But the internet is really starting to come along at this point. The internet's really starting to happen. And um, I, 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 something like Napster is starting to happen. You guys know Napster? Yeah, Napster is happening. No one has really figured, like the, the migration of information is happening to the internet. And this is something that we'll get back to. Like people are saying, oh shit, we need web pages for our company. Like there was no coke.com, there was nothing. Like people are trying to take information and put it on the web. It wasn't on the web yet. And people hadn't figured out how to monetize the web yet. Um, so I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about that, and at the time, I'm still doing 3D on my own and chasing that 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 realism. I'm chasing realism. I want my work to look real in the computer because uh, realism hadn't happened yet in 3D. And so one of the ways you could get realism was by highly detailed textures. So I bought one of the world's first digital cameras. Uh, it could hold 10 photos on it, 
And I had this idea that I'd make, uh, you, you know, I start taking photos of it. And these things, I was like, wow, these photos are amazing. They're 640 by 480. Uh, yeah, it was that. Yeah, exactly. You guys know no pixels, know how small it is. But I, it was so much fun. I'd get in my car and I'd drive, and I'd be like, go to cemeteries and take pictures of rock walls. Like, I, you know, I, I, I'd go down to sores and take pictures. It was just like the world was so rich there. And, um, and then I was like, I really want to teach my book self web design. So, and I realized that I wanted to share these textures with people. Uh, at the time, the only texture you could get on the internet uh, was a 32 by 32 background for your web page. That's all there was. It was like, I've got a website, let me put this at the background. And so I was like, well, fuck, I've got all these textures. Why don't I share them with my fellow artists? I mean, I love artists. I love people. I love, you know, I love creating art. I love seeing people create art. And so I created a website called freetextures.com. And freetextures.com, I made it my pledge, which was insane, I was youthful, to post 10 textures a day uh, on it for free, seven days a week. And so my camera could only hold 10 textures. And for the first like month, it was easy, but every day I'm like, oh fuck, I gotta do 10. And I have to look at it and go, oh shit, is it blurry, is it blurry, you know? And, and if it was blurry, I have to delete it, and it was a mess. It was really hard, but I loved it. And I started putting, and, 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 I, and I also bought free 3dmodels.com and free sound effects. I had this whole idea of this internet where people could, whatever you needed to make your digital art, you could just go grab and use. And I just, because because I knew for me, if, if I don't want to have to make it, I just want to get the idea across. So if I could create something that would allow people to do that, I thought that would, or just for myself, sharing what I did at the time. Gotcha. But, but anyway, um, it blew up. Like thirty thousand visitors a month. The the some of the artists at id software, the creators of Quake, were writing me. It was like holy shit, you know. It really got big really quickly, and I'm like, this is amazing. And a lot of and and, and I started to meet these pockets of people um, that were thinking like me, and they're like, hey, I'm doing textures too. Can I put them on your website? And it was taking me ten hours a day to just get my textures up there. You know, I was having to get the code and try it, and I didn't know what I was doing. I'm like, no, you can't. I don't have that bandwidth. It takes me all my time to get up one. So I come up uh, with this idea of, you know, for, for also freetextures.com, it kind of put me in a bind because I was like, I don't need money. And then I'm like, fuck, I kind of need money. <laughs> you know, I, I want to buy some action figures. I want to buy some CDs. And, and I couldn't monetize something like freetextures.com. So I was like, well, what if people could post up their stuff and sell it for a dollar? That would be cool, you know? And so I met this company called Digimation. Uh, I knew some from family friends, and I pitched them on this thing. We're like, hey, what if you're in 3D Studio Max, and you can just see a texture on a web page, click it, and just drag it onto your 3D model? And it instantly charges that person a dollar. And they're like, sold. Um, so I spent the next two years of my life uh, working in a, in a room with another programmer. We got uh, a couple million dollars from Intel and Kodak. So we raised money um, to create a TurboSquid. I don't, I don't know if anybody knows what TurboSquid is in here. Anyone know what TurboSquid is? Of course you don't. Uh, it's very niche -y. Um Just letting you know, I, 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 last weekend I met um, uh, this, the CEO for Wacom, I met the CEO, or not the CEO, but the creator of the Matrix trilogies and everything. And they were like, Turbo Squid, that's amazing. I've been using that for 20 years. So you guys are not the crowd that really uses Turbo Squid yet, but you might. Anyway, um, so I created Turbo Squid. The idea was that anyone could upload their art, because at the time you could just buy a CD of 300 models for like $200. And I was like, fuck that. You know how long it takes to make 300 models? Um, let's let's uh, l l l let's just put one at a time, and and we made it so that everybody could post up their models, and anybody in the world could download and buy them. And I had so much fun creating it, but as soon as it became a business, I fucking hated it. <laughs> I had to go to meetings, and then once the creative part of envisioning it was done, I was like, oh, this kind of sucks. I'm not ready for this world yet. Um, for one, we had fundamental disputes about like. They're like, well, we're going to charge 50-50. We'll take 50 cents, and they'll take 50 cents. And But wait, we can't sell it for a dollar. We need to sell, sell this for $50. I'm like, that sucks. Why don't we just take 10%? And they're like, no. You know, I was a young kid at the time. And so 
I left there and definitely got a little screwed in the process. I was young at the time. I mean, I still have some stock, but at, some, at one point I had 50%, but the guy that was running it was very, you know, not the most uh, honest guy that I kind of partnered with. Uh, he later got ousted out of the company for like uh, spying on people's emails and all sorts of stuff. So it's a weird relationship I have with TurboSquid. I love it and it's also a sore point for me because I really didn't understand business at that point. Uh, but I did it and it blew up, you know, it blew up. So, so many people around the world use TurboSquid today. It's really the largest 3D asset and tech te texture repository on the internet. So if you want a, uh, a model to use in your video game, you use TurboSquid.com and you can literally type in anything and there'll be a 3D model for it that you can get or a texture for it you can get. I, anyway, I left uh, TurboSquid and, um, you know, not knowing what we had really created, we launched TurboSquid in the year 2000 at SIGGRAPH, so a long time ago. Uh, I really didn't know what I'd created um, at that point, because um, it really was the first thing to allow people to, to sell digital assets over the internet, which is something we take for granted now, um, but it was really the first thing that did that. Um, so anyway, uh, I, 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 I took a year off and just fished. I had some money, and I just fished. I just fished, and, and we were living next to the lake. My wife had moved in and was living with me, and I, I just fished and just kind of doodled in three smacks and was just trying to get a handle on myself here late. Um, that's that teacher in me coming up. Um, and I just doodled, and, and, and I was like, you know, I want to fucking go make real video games now. I want to go make video. I, oh, I'll tell you what. So I, I was getting fish. I was eating the fish, and I got food poisoning, like really bad food poisoning from the fish. And, uh, and and after that bout, I'm like, fuck fishing. I want to go back to work. I can't eat another fish in my life. Um, so I put my portfolio together into a website, sent it out. Uh, I sent it to like 20 companies on a Friday, and by Monday, I had like 10 job offers. And by and by the and middle of the week, I had two serious job offers. Uh, one for uh, Nether Realms makes Mortal Kombat, and one for Luxo Flux and Activision uh, over there, and uh, in Santa Monica right down here. And that's how I ended up here. Uh, and I Googled Nether Realms. They live in Chicago, and Google Images it just really started to happen. And you Google Chicago, and it's all fucking snow. I'm like, fuck that. Because I Google Santa Monica, it's all like beaches, and it looked amazing. So we're going to Santa Monica. So we go to Santa Monica, and I, I go to Luxo Flux, and I don't know, I, I think I'm like the 26th or something person I hired at this, new, at this company. They had made Vigilante 8. It was a big game on the PS2. Anybody remember Vigilante 8 at all? Um, and they're working on a new IP called True Crime. True Crime LA, True Crime New York. Anybody remember True Crime LA and True New York? Hey, there we go. We got a couple people. So they put me in charge of the city of True Crime. So True Crime was really the first game that took GPS data and allowed it to generate a world. So when you would play True Crime, you played as a cop and would drive around accurate streets of Los Angeles. You could drive through Santa Monica College. You could drive all over. And so I was in charge of building all of this digitally. And True Crime did really well. I mean, I think we were the number one franchise for that year. We, we sold, you know, I think if you take all the sales between the True Crimes, it's close to a billion dollars. Those games, uh, you know, uh, grossed. So I had a lot of experience world building with that. Um, but then I, I did something. So I was, I don't know if some of you are shy. I was very shy at this point of my life. Very, very shy. Like. I'd say petrified to do something like this. Um, but my wife was getting her degree in social work and was like, you know, doing all these things that were out of her character. And so my friend was dating a girl at the Art Institute. Uh, and he's like, hey, they got a job opening. Um, you'd be a great teacher, Nick. And I'm like, fuck no, I won't. I don't want to get up in front of a class and talk to people. Uh, and he's like, oh, just try it. And, and, and thank you, Micah, uh, for telling me that. And so I did. And uh, this guy, who's still my friend today, I just saw him a couple days ago, uh, he uh, met me at the Art Institute, and they had just launched, like brand new, their game art and design game, just their game art and design degree. 
And I was like, holy fuck, you guys are teaching what I wanted to, to teach when I was in college. It's happening. And they're like, yeah, we don't have any clue what we're fucking doing. There was no real, like they had written some curriculums, but they're all shit. Like they really were all shit. It was just like, like here's the outcomes. Do something with that. Because it was a for-profit college. They, they were just like, people will buy game art design. Um, and, you know, I, I, he, he was, so Eric wasn't the one in charge of, of hiring. Um, but the guy that was in charge wasn't there. And so they're like, I will hire you. So I teach the class and I fall in love with it. Like, I fall in love with it for one simple reason. Uh, everybody that I worked with at Activision, half of them were there for the art, but I'd say half of them were there to get a paycheck. And I fundamentally, I didn't want to say didn't like, but I, I didn't have stuff in common with them. I, they were there for different reasons than me. But when I went to a classroom, the, Everybody was there for the right, and they just wanted to learn. And I just, I just felt this kinship to these people. And it was like making stuff for the right reasons. Um, so I kind of segued out of doing game, games, which I was a, a, you know, an art director that worked for Activision on, on like the Vigilante Eight Arcade. I was lead artist on the True Crime franchise. I worked on Kung Fu Panda and Shrek there, and these very amazing games that I worked on. But I just found that I wanted to teach. I love that just so much more. I love, I just felt good at the end of the day. And there was no fucking crunch. <laughs> There's no crunch mode in, when teaching. You come in for four hours, then the rest of the day do whatever the hell you want. You don't make it nearly as much money. I mean, I probably took a 75% uh, pay cut to do it uh, at the time, but it was what I wanted to do. So at there, I was very lucky. Uh, video games were just starting to be taught. And I was like, well, we're teaching it all wrong. Like this, sorry, this classroom structure is the, the worst way to teach video games. Uh, it is. I was like, we shouldn't do this. We should simulate a game studio. So we took all these classes and didn't tell anybody what we were doing at our institute and put four classes together with a spot of a year and said, we're going to simulate a game studio and work on games together for a whole year. And now that kind of happens in schools like they've kind of adopted. But at the time, there's no blueprint for this. So we created this thing called Game Wizards. Nobody knows about its cultural significance, but let's talk about why Game Wizards is culturally significant. Um, you guys just had a bunch of games up there, right? My graduates that I taught over 12 years, something like that, uh, went on to really help shape the game industry you love. Um, you guys had uh, Bioshock up there, right? Uh, Bio no, we didn't, I don't think I had anybody at Bioshock, but one of two of my students were the lead executive producer and the lead artist on Bioshock Infinity. Um, they, they graduated up very quickly and took over and ran that. Uh, one of my, Sony Santa Monica, one of my students is one of the, the lead game designers there. You guys had Riot Games up there. There was a student of mine that actually, um, he says, I get differencing opinions here, but he says, and I believe him, he doesn't have anything, any reason to lie, he's actually named League of Legends. Uh, he came up with a name for League of Legends. Um, they, they did this big company pool, they're like, write down you, what your name you want for this game. And he said, League of Legends, and, and everybody voted for it. So he named it. Um, my students, um, they work everywhere. Uh, and all the best companies, around. My, one of my students is, is the head of Google VR. Um, you know, the, 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 these, these people have gone on to amazing lives. And, and all of them uh, attributed to Game Wizards. Game Wizards, I didn't have grades. I didn't worry about tests. I did sorry. I didn't worry about quizzes. It was all about what have you made today, and how can we make it better, and just really treating it like a video game company. Um, so that was significant, significant. Um, but remember how I said I hated business? I hated business. Uh, AI got uh, so I, I eventually taught the program, but I also became in charge of Art, Art Institute of Los Angeles. They made me academic director, so I was in charge of everything. I just didn't, I did it just because I didn't want anybody screwing up my playground. Um, but we got bought by Goldman Sachs, and Goldman Sachs is, is you know, as business as you can get. And it was very like, you know, I saw student tuition go from like 30,000 to 100,000. I saw my students who I knew and loved going into a lifetime of debt. Um, I had students that were um, working on, uh, oh, what was it? What's that game company's games? Uh, you know, guys know that game company? They have the one where you walk around the sand dunes and shit. Remember? Journey? Yeah. Journey, yeah. One of my students was one of the two artists that made Journey. And, you know, I remember having a talk with him, and he's like, I can't even afford a car, Nick. I'm in such debt as a student. 
And I was, I had this moment awakening going, oh fuck, what I'm doing is evil here. Um, the amount of money they're charging for this education is fucking criminal. Um, so I left. I was like, fuck this place. I, I just realized what I was, I felt like I was sh a Nazi shuffling kids into the ovens. I mean, it was like, oh, come on in. You're going to get a lifetime of debt. Because for every student that I taught that had um, um, a great job, the executive producer at, at, uh, for, for a Bioshock Infinity or, you know, uh, like at Call of Duty, about 30 of this, the people that work at Call of Duty, where it's a lead, lead vehicle designer, the lead, you know, weapons guy. I don't know if it's lead weapons guy. Um, but about 30 of my students actively work in Call of Duty Day. But for every one of those amazing students that make that, um, there was a lot of students that, I don't know, I'm just here, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm right for them, and now they've got this lifetime of debt. And so I stopped. I was like, fuck this place, and left. Because um, I found a new drug. <laughs> I stopped drugs, by the way. Um, uh, you know, about, it's about 20, I stopped. So I, I, the indie game development scene hit. The indie game development scene hit uh, right in the middle of all this because I used to teach people how to work at AAA companies, and then this magic thing happened. And you guys are part of this magic thing. You got to realize I went to work for Activision because I needed to work for them. I needed to work for them because I wanted to make a video game. To make a video game, here's what it took to make a video game: I had to have a million dollars to get the Unreal Engine. Just to get it installed in my computer was a million dollars. How much does it cost you guys? It's like 900. No, it's fucking free. No, Unreal's not free. Unreal is free, dude. Trust me, it is free. <laughs> Go Google it. Uh, it is free now. I also needed um, all this money to buy computers and space. I also needed to hire these these you know luminaries of programming to be able to figure out how to get stuff on the uh, PlayStation 2. I also needed to, to know people that knew how to box CDs and make manuals. I also needed to, to, to have millions of dollars for advertising on television. I, I needed to know people that knew people at Target and Walmart to put stuff on shelves. So for me to have an idea and then to get it out, there were so many barriers to entry. But then this amazing thing, digital distribution happened. App stores and Xbox Live. I, I made one of the first Xbox Live games. Um, this new thing happened where all those things from unreal engine being free to computers costing nothing to software costing nothing to being this wealth of talent around the world with wiki pages and whatever information to now you've got youtube and you don't need an adver advertising budget you can just put a thing on there and it goes viral and everybody knows about your game to not having to box cds um it all just changed it was a giant sea change in how the video game industry worked and i was like oh i want to be in on that only problem was i didn't know how to code <laughs> I didn't know how to program. Um, I, I, I was an artist. I was a designer. Um, so I started teaching myself coding. That was about 30. I was like, I need to know coding for one, because I hate dealing with programmers. You know, I, it's, it's, it's hard to like, you, like, you guys that don't know coding, learn it. It's, it's going to be a requirement for everybody coming up here. Um, anyway, I started teaching myself coding, getting the indie scene. And I was really getting deep on releasing a, a video game of mine. Actually, the video game that you guys played, that's the one that I was going to really release. Um, but I was nervous. Uh, I, 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 I had family. I got two, a kid. You know, we, we, we had some money, but it wasn't everything. And I'm like, I, I don't know if this is a sure bet. And I met this, this guy. We got a phone call. I met this guy at Ucode, and it felt like a sure bet to me. I was like, let me work on that for a bit, and I'll learn programming as I go. And so you code, um, we, we blew up to like a bunch of locations. We teach kids. I've taught thousands of kids now how to code uh, and cr create stuff. I, I taught them all that stuff. It was, it was an amazing couple of years of my life. Um, but the founder of you code, and I kind of consider myself a founder because it was very infantile, this, the, the, the session at the, the beginning. But can you turn that off? Thank you. Um, We've had a very divergent uh, idea of what U-Coach would become. He's a hardcore computer scientist, math. He's one of the most intelligent people I know. Uh, I love that stuff, but I also love, I think of it a, as a holistic way. He's very focused on just programming and math, and I think of it as like it's a, this mesh process of art and sound and coding. It's all one thing, so you've got to teach it all together. 
you know, so he and I decided, well, you do that. I'm going to go do my own thing. So I founded Game Gen. Uh, I founded Game Gen about three years ago. Uh, I was luckily enough to meet some very, very, very uh, amazing people um, that are investors in Game Gen. Um, I don't think I'll say their names, uh, but they kind of created the internet in a lot of ways and created the world we, we, we go through. Um, I'm very lucky they decided to invest. They probably invested over a million dollars in Game Gen right now. We're still not making any money. <laughs> uh, and it's really, I th think, looking back now at it, it's because um, I'm a very niche person and not everybody wants to make games. And you tell parents, uh, oh, I guess I haven't quite described what Game Gen is. So Game Gen was game wizards, pretty much, but for kids. Um, it's like, we'll teach your kids how to play video games. And parents are like, fuck, they play too many video games. So it's not a good fit in some ways. We're doing okay, and we're not going to go under. Um, we're definitely pivoting to this next moment. Um, I, I'll just a little bit about Game Gen. I do consider, even though we're not that wildly profitable, I do feel like we're very profitable in the sense, uh, if you go to gamegen.games, we have over thousands of games on there that our students have created. And they're some of the best games, student games you'll ever play. Um, I have 10 year olds that are making stuff that's better than in my, uh, was it my college classes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because for one reason, I finally figured out how to teach video games. So uh, we teach video games a very interesting way. We don't try to teach how to make Call of Duty, God of War, uh, Minecraft. We teach video game concepts, program concepts, art concepts in the order they're created in. So we combine history where we teach somebody how Pong was created. We teach them all the math, we teach them all the art behind that, and then they learn that, and then they make their own remix version of that. Then that was, Pong was made in 1972. We actually go before that 1962 Space War, but we go into like 1973 Lunar Lander, and we start to go through the years, and we pick out the seminal moments in video game history and teach how those, what people were thinking about, how those were created, and then uh, we could work up to Mario and Zelda, and it gets crazy complex. So you can, you know, quite quickly go through all this and you've got a great scaffolded learning to be able to understand how to code a video game and what they are. Um, so anyway, uh, that's where I'm at in my world. Uh, you know, oh, well, no, there's one more thing to game gen. So um, autism. Autism has is, is, is been in my life off and on for a lot of years. Uh, I feel like I'm very, I've been said that I'm very close on the spectrum. Um, uh, not quite there, you know, I think I was able to overcome some stuff, but uh, I started teaching adult classes at Game Gen, and uh, I started teaching just because I like teaching adults, they're a little bit more capable than kids, and I realized that my most talented students were all on the spectrum um, in that class, and then I started realizing the most talented students that I had taught throughout the years were also on the autistic spectrum. Um, all the things that, that, that challenge them in life, um, that they have hardship with, social interaction, um, they focus too much on things, uh, you know, those are all bonuses when it comes to programming. And so I realized that, I'm like, holy fuck, this is amazing. Um, <laughs> let me just focus on that. So I've been researching uh, it, and, and for the past year I've been teaching um, students on the spectrum how to code and design video games. Just recently this year, we went to USC, my team, for the Global Game Jam, the largest game jam in all of California. And uh, out of like 400 people, my team was one of the winners. Um, I just took my students from the spectrum, was like, let's go win global. I'd already won global, I've won global game jam twice, by the way. Um, I took it, I won three years ago, I took a year off and I went there, went there again. And there's no, technically no winners, but they kind of announce something there at the USC, so I went there and won. Um, and, uh, and so now I'm working towards getting a five day a week uh, program for students on the spectrum, students with uh, developmental disabilities um, to learn how to create using the computer, get jobs with that, and they don't have to pay a dime. Uh, we're getting funding from regional centers. We're, 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 it's, 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 I, I didn't want to take money from people. I hate taking money from people. So it's all going to be paid for. Uh, for, for, for them, and I think that's just a, a, a wonderful thing. I'm almost done. Uh, I'm in the final stages of signing the paperwork. So I'm at this precipice where I'm like, um, I, I, I need to figure out how to teach them and what to teach them. Um, 
and what to do with them. I mean, I really want to teach them indie game development, but um, what do I what do I teach them? You know, how do I prepare them so they can go get a job and be ready for this world? And uh, I I found something. <laughs> Does anybody know what this is? Oh, good. No one knows. Um, well, you told me what you were bringing in. Oh, yeah. She, the teacher knows. Teacher knows. Like I said, I want you to decide. Right. So, um, I've been envisioning a world for many years um, where the computer comes outside of the computer. Um, where, I mean, I, I fundamentally fucking hate walking around and seeing everybody like this, even though I'm doing it. Like, I'm doing it too. Because I, I need to be connected to that information. I hate it. It's giving, it's taking away this. Um, and I thought VR was going to be it, and, and but VR wasn't it, and it was because of this. Everybody puts on those fucking glasses, and it's just so dehumanizing and cold and dark. You stare at darkness for ten minutes, half time while you're waiting something. That, that, that's psychologically, I think, people don't really think about that, but that's psychologically disturbing. With these... I can still see all of you. And I know I look ridiculous, but I won't look like this long. These will get better. Um, let's boot this thing up. So this, I've been envisioning a world for a long time. I even, so I have a website called uh, readyplayerworld.what? What? Oh, sure. There we go. Um, I'll write down some of the fit things. Um, I have a website called Ready Player World, uh, dot Weebly. This is before Ready Player One came out, but yes, I love Ready Player One. I read it, and I'm just like, that's amazing. I want to go to that world. And uh, and he kind of, uh, Ernest Klein kind of um, inspired me to be like, all these visions I was having in my head, he wrote down his visions, and I'm like, I've noodled cartoons. That's how I design games. I kind of noodle cartoons. Um, I, I, it inspired me to go, you know, I just got to get this shit down, what my vision of the future is. So you'll go across, I don't know, 40 or 50 cartoons on there, which are really visions. Oh, there it is. Hi, little guy. There's something here. Um, um, so I noodled all these cartoons uh, on that, my vision for what the world was going to be and how it was going to happen. Uh, but they were all they were just glimpses for me of what it was going to become. Uh, I didn't have a framework to work in. I didn't know what it was going to be. This is what it's going to be. So for you guys getting ready to go into the world, oops, I got to turn the controller on. So for you guys getting ready to go out in the world, um, the world fundamentally has changed. Why has it changed? Um, this is called a spatial computer. This computer, unlike your phone, is aware of everything going on. It has more sensors capturing my uh, view of reality than anything else. Um, it's a spatial computer that allows me to walk and see... What? Controller. Oh, hold on. I've got to do some stuff. Damn it. Oh. Okay, here we go. <laughs> it's very distracting having these things pop up and do this, but I figured this would lend more gravity to my, uh, my talk. Um, where was I? Uh, let me turn the sound down. Oh my god, hold on. What, where was I at? Sensors. Sensors, yes. It has more sensors than everything else. Here, let's just do this. Oh my god. Okay, back to reality. <laughs> um, it has more sensors than anything that was ever created. Um, it is a, you know, a surveillance nightmare <laughs> from a, a human standpoint. Uh, but for governments, it's an amazing uh, tool. It, it, it has uh, everything... Uh, it knows everything about the world I'm in. It knows everything around the world I'm in. Um, I'm going to let you guys play with it. Uh, I'll say this. This So I gave you guys a history of my life. Because I caught certain waves. I was kind of... when the I wasn't there at the start of the wave for the dot-coms. I was there as it was kind of cresting. I was there for its crest. Uh, but I didn't... I, you know, I was a kid at the time. Didn't really understand what I was even doing at the time. Um, this is the start of a different 
way of life for everyone. Um, it really is. It's you guys will be like, oh, I remember this crazy class you took, and this guy told me about this shit. Um, <laughs> you know, in 20 years when everyone is living in a video game. You know, and I, I know it, you know you think of laser beams and all that stuff, but video games are so much more than that. You think about Minecraft. Uh, you can create these amazing structures in Minecraft. That's the game. You know, it's a wonderful thing. That's what I mean when I say living in video. It's not laser guns. It's 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 everything um, that you love about games is now in the world. And the cool thing about this, it's in the world, but it's a shared world. Meaning, if if you had a pair of glasses and you had a pair of glasses, you could see these things that were distracting me a couple of seconds ago. So it's a shared experience. It's still very new. Like this thing for you guys, you know, there's only 3,000 members on the Reddit for Magic Leap. Only 3,000 members. Magic Leap only has 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. The world doesn't know about this thing, fundamentally. Um, the, uh, you know, but the heads of the world, uh, you know, people, the heads of Epic uh, for Unreal, the heads of Unity, um, the heads of Industrial Light and Magic and, and Weta and the CEO for AT&T and the CEO for Wacom, they were at this conference. I went to a conference here, the Magic Con. Everybody that is technologically connected understands the significance of it. And it's going to change you guys' lives. So roundaboutly, let's get to the point before I get to the demo for this thing. I don't want to speak too abstractly because it can, it's like, what the fuck's he talking about? Um, you won't understand what I'm talking about for like five years. Um, but I'll say this. You guys, I came here, she asked me to touch on narrative, and I told you narrative was going to be thrown out. Um, it's because we were disconnected from it. You know, narrative was inside of it, but now narrative is going to be all around us. Um, I'll, I'm just going to pull up one application to show you guys, because we don't have a lot of time, I think. Yes, we don't have a lot of time. I'll have everybody. Um, I'm going to... Just show you what narrative looks like. Uh, oh God, did I shut it off? What did I do with this? Oh good. Oh okay. okay. Hold on, I got a little log in here. Oh no. Okay, good. I'm getting there. I know you guys are like, why is he pointing at us? Uh, we don't recognize your space. Scan the space to improve your world. I'll do that later. Um, new content may not be saved. Okay. So I've got a floating menu in front of me, and I'm going to go get the create app out. And I'm going to show you, so narrative deals with characters. You need characters, right? So what happens when narrative, you've got a little knight running around, fighting another knight, jumping off that desk, uh, trying to rescue a princess on that table. Um, ready to set up, your, set up your play space? Yes. So right now, you guys are, are, are not seeing it, but you have wireframe all over your stuff. And I've actually got to do this scanning in procedure where I'm, I'm building the world. So I'm looking at a, uh, a, a little uh, uh, eyeball up there. I'm looking at an eyeball up there. And what I'm seeing is a wireframe building around me. It's building a 3D space that is semi-dynamic. Um, and this 3D space, it's causing me to look all around, find these things, so that once it builds it, it can use this as a collision mesh. And this collision mesh, I can then place stuff on the ground. I can then, uh, oh, these things. It's kind of a fun little game looking at all these guys. Oh god, where are we at here? Where are you at? Oh. Um, and we're halfway there. So you see it knitting this world together. It's really amazing. There you are. I found you. And I found you. We're starting to get there. So it's knitting this world around. And this world is what you're going to use one day to author stuff. And you'll be able to create anything virtually. And Remember how I said that the, the internet um, was having to be put onto the internet? There was a time where all information had to be put on the internet. Does anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. yes? yes? That is what's going to happen with this. All the information we have on the internet and books and computers is going to be have to apply for that. So for you guys wanting to have careers, um, that's a great career to have. Um, because um, you're, you can be one of the first at it. And usually the people that you know, adopt things first and are those people that are really get to shape the world, you know, I think you guys are probably monetarily driven. Oh, let me pull down my thing here. Um, can be very successful. All right, let's uh, try this thing out. So let me get a, uh, I'm gonna get a jellyfish.
Oh, oh, hold on. I'm going to first get, oh, no, not you, yeah. not you, not you. I'm going to get this, because this is really cool. <laughs> Nick, how do you want to work that? So, well, I, yeah, I, I, so I'm going to tell you really quickly how we're going to work this thing out. Um, I'm going to put a couple things right here in front. And then I'm going to ask you guys, so here's the thing that can happen. I'm going to have you stand here in front of me. I'm going to put them on you because if I shift them around, it loses tracking for the world and will destroy the experience. I'm gonna ask you to find a jellyfish. I'm also gonna ask you to, to walk up and see a portal to another dimension. The next class starts at 12.45, so. Perfect, Let's, I'll give you guys a minute. Come on, come on up here, Daniel. Let's do this, enough talk. Let's see. He's, oh, there's the, I see the mirror. That's the menu. the menu, look up yeah. there. Oh wow! Walk up to it. <laughs> oh my God! Come it's on, come. awesome. It looks physical. Yeah, it is. It's physical, and and because it knew there was mesh there, so when I placed it, come back for me. Oh, oh, oh. my bad. Sweet. Do you oh see my jellyfish? God! Look at the jellyfish. I know. Sorry. Time to get out. No more for you. We don't have time. We got a lot of people. Come on. Come on. Well, that's so good. <laughs> I highly recommend. Uh, it. All right. Come here, dude. That's the first time I've done AR. That's the first time anybody's done AR. <laughs> like, like, there's HoloLens out there, but the difference between Microsoft and, and Magic Leap is, is Microsoft, that's just one product out of many yeah. for Microsoft. This company has a vision for the future that is directly in line with my vision for the future. They're, this is going to be their only thing. And it's called Magic Leap. It's called Magic Leap. Do you see it's any really jelly cool. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, dude. Come um, on out. <laughs> I have a question. Is sure, it? sure. Ask me. You guys, so for, feel free to ask me questions. I'll kind of, you know, you guys know where to look now. Uh, I'll answer questions as we go. Come on over, ask me a question. Um, <clears throat> is the collision mesh, like, saved? It does, but so it tries to uh, recognize, um, keep it high in the back here, it tries to recognize the room, uh, but sometimes it can't recognize the room. This technology is still infinitesimal. Uh, it's only going to get better. Okay, go walk up to it. <laughs> it's a jellyfish. Yeah. Oh, I was touching it. Oh, my God. It's magic, right? Yeah. It's the magic leap. Like, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Come on up, dude. Mr. Dude. Hey, you picked a good day to not wear your hat. Good job. No kidding. Hey, earlier, you know, yeah. teacher didn't recognize him. He didn't have his hat on. Okay. So, look, look, look up there. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> So it's got a limited view space. So I'd say the ideal uh, working uh, position for it is about 10 feet away. About 10 feet away is where it really, really works. Wow. Right? That is, that is insane. I know. I know. I know. So I highly recommend uh, everyone watching the Magic Leap keynote speech. It's a really great speech for people two years from now or three years from now. I think they, they used a lot of abstract talk and it might have alienated some people. I got it, I loved it. But um, come on here, dude, come on. All right, here we go. All right. But I have, highly recommend you guys seeing it. It'll, it'll make more sense in the years to come. For people who do wear glasses, is it? Like so they, they do, glasses? they're gonna, I wear glasses and they do say they're gonna have prescriptive lenses uh, uh, coming, actually. Are losing my eyesight about six months ago. Uh, I, I never wore glasses, but I really think what was happening, my body was just trying to prepare me for augmented reality. <laughs> That's what was happening. What do you, you, you cool? You're cool. Okay. He's cool. He's cool. Come on up. Any other questions for me? I'll answer anything. So given that like AR out, yeah. is gonna be how you author things, oh, like wow. <laughs> go walk up to it. Given what? that like AR is kind of gonna be how things are authored, right? So <laughs> would you advocate like getting out of design? No, no, learn, no, no. I advocate for being a student in the world, learning everything you possibly can. Yeah. yeah. As well as learning Unreal and Unity, right. uh, and and coding right. and art and all those things. Thank you. Just the um, too, because it, uh, it, you know. Game designers are now the authors of the world, if that makes a sense. Totally. You know, yeah. so learning all that stuff is yeah. 
uh, I call them verse developers. Uh, you know, a verse developer, because you're really essentially building universes. <laughs> you're essentially building universes. Whoa, we're a little tethered here. Yeah, and do you see any jellyfish? Here, scoot back. They kind of swim all around. There might be something. If you scoot back, you might see one. There you go. You found one. Yeah. I know. He's a cute little guy, isn't he? I, I'm so mad at the, or not mad at the Magic Leap. I feel like they missed a, uh, a bet. They should have, like, you got all these characters you can play. It's like jellyfish. They should have put a ghost in there. It would have made it amazing. Uh, oh, oh we're, we're right here, dude. Come on up. Right yeah, you don't have to go. It's we okay. Time, and I've already seen I don't know why you. Okay, he's already seen. Right, Come on. For it. I had a couple students uh, who refused to look through it. Uh, you know, they, they, they're no, they're they're on the spectrum, and it was just I think they thought it was going to be too an intensive an experience for them. So I'm trying to work through mm -hmm. that fear with them um, to have them understand. Yeah, it looks like a full-on portal. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, I, I should have brought some wet wipes, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Are you going to come? Oh, no, I had a question. Uh, oh, oh, okay, do you want to come? Okay. What's your question? So are you an evangelist for Magic Beat? No, not at all. No, I, I've just been, I'm... I'm not an I don't work for Magic Leap. I don't have any stock in Magic Leap or anything like that. I um, I just have always been a f seeing the future in a lot of ways and been on that, and that was interested me. And I've been seeing this future for many years now. Um, I drew cartoons about three years ago, but I've been seeing it for ten years. And and just to like for me, it's like I've been living in a world where I didn't fit in in a lot of ways. And so when this happened, I'm like, holy fuck. I've been waiting for this moment for the rest of my life, or my, for my entire life. Come on up, dude. So I'm not an evangelist for them. I just understand the significance of it. It's like, it's like when the first computer was invented. <laughs> the first home computer. Yes, it's very trippy. Yes, don't do this on acid, kids. Uh, it's, uh, those portals will freak you the fuck out. How much does the rig cost? It's expensive. I paid three grand for this thing, um, for, for it all. But um, you know that's going to go down. Yeah. You know, I mean, the iPhone costs like a thousand dollars, but you do those monthly payments, it costs nothing. Well, they're basically the Oculus, free. Now the Oculus go. Right, 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 right. right. Oh, there you go. Mr. You gotta line it up. Like it's that. Not on your nose. It's crooked. Oh yeah, keep it. Tight. So, so there's also another thing. You might might not have an optimal experience. So there's three head sizes. It's really weird when they might put a credit card over your head. You take a photo or or like a, a live stream of your face, and they measure your eye distance. And so I was setting one, but it, it, you need to have you need to get a glasses that match your eye distance to really have the most optimal experience. Um, uh, 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 oh, sorry. Yeah, let me get to him. He's he, uh, he, come on. Yeah, what's your question? Just just shout out. Don't make me call on you. Uh, <laughs> just say like uh, AR people say mixed reality. Like what's sort of the terminology? So I, you know, they were uh, so XR. XR I think is going to be thing. It's uh, XR is, is mixed reality. It's virtual reality, which is only virtual. AR, which is only augmented. The, what? Oh, you see what? You see the fish? You see the fish? Oh, good, yeah. yeah, good job. <laughs> you see the fish? Yeah, so, so yes, X, XR, I think, is going to be the word that's that's really coined. I also think the word verse is going to be coined. I, 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 I bought, uh, like, 20 domain names the other night. Uh, because I think what you're essentially buying is, 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 is you're creating, oh, sorry. Uh, you're essentially creating universes for people to explore. Um, so my focus, uh, I'll tell you guys my focus, what I'm working on right now. Um, oh, look up there. Sorry, I might not see something. Yeah, there you go. Um, so my focus is this. I love teaching. I love creating. I love everything. Of, uh, I love humans. I'm going to create the first augmented reality classroom curriculum and experience. So if a kid wants to learn about science. He's going to see a virtual rose bush, or maybe it's a real pot, like a real plant pot. And this thing can recognize hand definitions. He's just going to be able to go, and a, a virtual seed will grow or land in it. He'll then need to, like, 
make a grain cloud with his hand. They'll then need to, you know, make light shine on it, be able to pull it up and, and see all the insides of the cells of it and really explain, like, like teach you the way reality really is. Um, okay, so my thing is I'm going to come at this. So many people are going to come at this from different ways. I'm coming at it from the educational yeah, perspective. Ludus. Oh, there you go. Oh, man, that's a great one. Yeah, that, that's actually a good name. I might take that from you. I love, maybe I'll get to meet uh, Ernest Klein one day oh, if my name is Ludus. <laughs> I'd love to meet that it's guy. on holiday. I know. That or Holodeck or some. I, I, I've kind of got a good name. I, my name, I'm going to call it, is uh, Slip First. Um, I, I like the idea of slipping into another reality. Yes? Uh, just wanted to let you know your phone's at 15%. Oh, it's 15%? Yes. But it's still recording, right? Yeah, it's still We're recording. We're good. <laughs> we should be done in a couple minutes here, I hope. Because I'm really hungry. <laughs> and you might see a couple of jellyfish. Did you see them? The jellyfish? You saw them over there. I see there you go. You got them. Yeah, same. Awesome. Yeah, they move all the around. Menu. They're bound by the environment um, in there. Who, who, who else do we have? All right. What, you ready to see yeah. something? What kind right, of, here we go. What kind of narrative uh, potential do you see? Everything. <laughs> so the narrative potential is in, uh, narrative potential is infinite. Yeah. I mean, like to me, it seems like you said that narrative is going to be broken down. Well, I think you're going to have to throw away everything you know, yeah. pick up the pieces, and redesign it. Right. You know. I mean, it's, it's just change. But well, with movies and, and with video games, you're sort of... So they're at the, I mean, this is not my idea. Yeah, they're exactly. talking, so AT&T is supporting um, uh, uh, Magic Leap. Um, AT&T just bought Warner Brothers, I think just to have Warner Brothers content. And oh, yeah. then uh, Warner Brothers owns like Batman, so they talk about this, the thing. Imagine a Batman movie that isn't a movie, but it's a city scale narrative that you're walking around the streets of the city and seeing Batman run on the rooftops and jumping down and you see thugs over there that you're helping him, you know, beat up. You, you know, you, you, you go into a room and it looks like the Batcave, you got to like talk with them about how to solve this thing. It, it's going to be amazing, but it, you know, here's the thing you can't underestimate. Here's the thing that I, I don't know how fast this is going to move, but if you look at the rate of user adoption, like here's the scary fucking thing. It's moving so quickly. Pokemon Go had 100 million installs in 17 days. How fucking amazing is that, right? So the big problem Magic Leap has is user adoption um, and getting these things out there. I fundamentally think the Vive and Oculus did a horrible job at it. Um, Right. They are. Well, three minutes. We're gonna have to kind of. I mean. Uh, okay. I mean, but like I said, we can. The next class comes at twelve forty-five. Some people are gonna have to leave at. at okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're wrapping it up. Okay. What, what time does it end at? Okay, twelve thirty-five. So let's pause. Hold, hold on. I'll show it to you guys after class. Um, let me just end on this note, so you guys can get out of here. This is. A reality reset. It's a chance to um, fundamentally throw away everything we've done before, whether it's street signs or streets or the way buildings are designed, to the way government works, to the way um, public, you know, facilities work, to how buying things and 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 sharing things. Um, how humans interact with each other. Um, everything is gonna change. Like right now you guys are seeing a, a room, but what you're not as this, and you're walking throughout the city and everything is virtual um, around you. And, and it's gonna change fundamentally the world. And I'm, I'm calling it, you guys are gonna join the, the reality reset revolution. Um, Cause it really is about changing the, the reality that we live in and putting a whole new layer or verse on top of that. And I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna turn out. But the cool thing is, and you guys that are students in this room, get a chance to have a front row seat to make that new reality. And that's a wonderful gift to be given. So uh, anyway, I wanna thank you guys for having me. I wanna well, thank, thank Julia so for having me. And, and I said resonated with anybody, um, feel free to contact me and uh, 
I'm, I'm happy to talk about this stuff 24 hours a day because it's all I think about. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, I'll stay back. All right, okay. thank you guys. Okay, Here, you want to turn off? All right, come on up if you're gonna try it. All right, thank you guys for sticking through the video, or maybe you just scrubbed to this part. Uh, I plan on really sharing a lot of uh, what I see that's about to happen on this channel. So if you're a futurist and like to imagine the future like me, you will probably want to hit the uh, like and subscribe and the dab bell and all the crap that people say on these these YouTube videos. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'll also be sharing a, a, a lot of my uh, game design docs, my, my, my cartoons about the future. Uh, some of you might have checked out Ready Player World. Uh, dot com or well, no sorry readyplayerworld.weebly.com uh, I'm, I'm, I'm planning on sharing some of those old ones but I'm drawing a whole bunch of new ones so I'm excited to share them with you guys and 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 to really uh, you know figure out what this new reality looks like with all of you guys so have a great one bye bye crap <laughs> I almost let you guys go there but not quite done um, yeah, a lot of this stuff probably feels abstract still. It's hard to communicate it unless you put it on. So I encourage you, if, if you know somebody with a Magic Leap or if uh, you could have the, the money to get it, buy it. I, they've also got 0% down and no, Magic Leap is not paying me anything for this. I'm not an evangelist of Magic Leap. Well, I guess I am evangelist, but I'm not making any money from it. Uh, I just am excited to create on it. Um, but I highly recommend you find to get a copy and here's the advice I'll give you when getting a copy uh, or getting a, a pair of glasses, not copy, it's a pair of glasses, is it's really, try to get it so you can take it home and play with it just because, um, just putting it on for 50 minutes and going, oh yeah, I get it. No, you don't. You don't get it. Um, go home in your house, in the place you call home, put it on, use it and just play. Just play with it and um, maybe you'll start to see what I'm seeing and a lot of other people are about to, 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 to start seeing and start creating with. So yeah, exciting. Bye guys.